Basically, we have two stories. The Ukrainians say they sent missiles, anti-ship missiles to destroy the, the Russian warship. The Russians say, no, nope, it was an accident. However, there seems to be some cracks in the Russian story. I have to say that historically speaking, naval affairs is not Russia's strong point. Hi and welcome to History Legends, here are the latest news about the Russo-Ukrainian war. Honestly, there's so many things going on right now, I don't even know where to start. If you're new to the channel, make sure to check out my Ukraine playlist, that way you can catch up with everything I said in the past. And surprise surprise, some of my Ukraine videos have been targeted with limited ads because of this topic. So if you want to support my work about Ukraine, if you like the information you get, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon. This is very important. The link is in the description. Alright, the big news of the day. The Russian warship Moskva sinks in Black Sea. We're gonna use my favorite tool. Let's go. Moskva, the flagship of the Russian fleet. Honestly, I didn't learn about this warship before, but from it, what it says here, the 510 crew missile cruiser was a symbol of Russia's military power, leading its naval assault on Ukraine. Now, the entire problem about it is that Ukraine claims it hit the warship with missiles. This is what they said. I went to Wikipedia and this is what they said. The forces hit Moskva with two Neptune anti-ship missiles. And allegedly, Ukrainian sources reported that the attack was supported by a Bayraktar TB2 combat drone which distracted the Russian ship defenses. Interesting. However, the thing is that according to the US Department of Defense, the US Defense Department, the cause of the explosion was not clear. At the same time, you can see here, the Russian Minister of Defense said that a fire had caused munitions to explode and that the ship had been seriously damaged without any reference to a Ukrainian strike. Basically, we have two stories. The Ukrainians say they sent missiles, anti-ship missiles to destroy the, the Russian warship. The Russians say, no, nope, it was an accident. However, there seems to be some cracks in the Russian story. The ministry said that the crew had been fully evacuated, but there were increasing reports of lives lost, including the ship's captain. And then the Russians said that the ship was fine, that it would be towed to Sevastopol for repairs. But then the news came that in the middle of a storm, stormy weather, the Moskva that was being towed sank. As you guys know, I'm not a naval expert, but I think that US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan summarized it pretty well. He says, Moscow has to choose between two stories. One story that it is incompetent and another that it just came under attack. And neither story is good for them. But we also have to look at the other side. And you have a Russian military analyst that said that the flagship was quite old and they had more status than real combat value. Who to believe? Check this out. If we look at the Wikipedia page, there's something very interesting. Check this out. It was launched in 1979. So it's quite an old ship. Over 40 years. And... The crazy thing is that it was built in the shipbuilding plant of modern day Mykolaiv, Ukrainian SSR. And still to this day, Mykolaiv is a major naval base. If we go back to the BBC, the 12,490 ton vessel is the biggest Russian warship to be sunk in action since World War II. Actually, this is what they mention here. Check this out. They said that the previous biggest Russian battleship to be lost was the Soviet battleship Marat in 1941 against the Germans. And the last time a ship of a similar size was sunk was a cruiser ARA, Argentinian, General Belgrano, which was sunk by the Royal Navy during the Falcons War. I have to say that, historically speaking, naval affairs is not Russia's strong point. And we have multiple stories. One story that says, no, nah, there's no casualties. But we know this is BS. So there are casualties. How many? That's a question. Some people say that only 58 survived out of the 510. And now you might ask, was it an accident? Was it legit? And the worst is that this cruiser was the one involved in this entire Snake Island affair. The one that asked the Snake Island garrison to surrender. And now the warship is gone. And there's some memes already saying that the Russians decided to convert it into a submarine. I mean, that's pretty funny. However, was it a Ukrainian missile attack? 
or was it an accident? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you think. However, there have been incidents of historically of many Russian vessels catching fire because of accidents. We've seen that not long ago. I mean, 2019, Russia's only aircraft carrier catches fire, one dead and two missing. It was clearly an accident. And even before they said that last October, a crane fell on it during the repair works, gouging a hole on its deck. Like, <laughs> what? The accident took place after a power supply disruption caused the pumps of the floating dry dock, which was holding the aircraft carrier to break down, causing the infrastructure, the structure to sink. And here, what's important, they say, the Kuznetsov accident is at least the second deadly fire for Russia's Navy this year alone. In July, a fire aboard a Russian deep water submersible killed 14 crew. The submariners died from smoke inhalation after a blaze broke out on the craft. So there's a strong case about the accident because it's something that has been happening a lot with Russia's Navy. And this points towards one thing we already mentioned before, corruption. The people in charge of the naval work got some money. They put most of the money on the side and with the money they had left, they bought cheap materials, didn't pay the workers properly, who did a bad job, and basically at every level there was some mismanagement. So yes, at the end you have a warship, but is it really that good? No. Also, there's the case of poor design of Russian vessels, most likely by a lack of naval experience. This reminds me of the poorly designed Japanese aircraft carriers at the Battle of Midway during World War II. Their main flaw was poor damage control. If US aircraft carriers survived being hit by 3-4 bombs frequently, Japanese carriers could turn into a flaming wreck with a single hit. For example, on Japanese aircraft carriers, gasoline lines ran to fueling stations on all three aircraft decks in a connected crisscross manner that made it likely that fire would spread between decks quickly. On top of that, fire compartmentalization was poor, gasoline fumes from ruptured pipes could run through the vessel. And if all this was not bad enough, there were no flashproof doors to protect bombs and torpedo hoists from fire, which would often result in massive boom. By the way, always start with a CNN source. You know, that way I'm not gonna get canceled. It's very important. From now on, we'll use a CNN article for every video. Okay, look at that. We'll use another CNN article. Is it the same guy, Brad Lennon? Okay. Oh my God, it's the same guy, Brad Lennon. Brad Lennon, <laughs> no way. CNN has not been able to independently verify what caused the damage on the ship. Long story short, this ship is at the bottom of the Black Sea. I don't know exactly where, but somewhere in between here. It was attacked here and it went to Sebastopol in Crimea and sank. And the ship sunk somewhere along the way. Neptune missiles. I'm just curious what it is. Explained, okay. Um, I'm gonna check here. Oh, check this out. The insane thing. Okay, it's recently came into service, 2021. It's brand new and it has a range of 300 kilometers. That's massive. And here it says, was hit by two Neptune missiles. Oh, resulting in fire and the subsequent explosion of a shipboard ammunition store. Oh, so maybe that's what the Russians meant by it. the ammunition just exploded. But the vessel was still afloat. So in a way, the missiles work. But if you need two of them and the ship wasn't fully destroyed on the spot. Oh, yeah, that's important. The missiles were fired from a hidden battery near Odessa. And here. Drones were used to harass the vessel to keep its air defense distracted before the missiles were fired from a hidden battery in Odessa. And here it's important, at least two of the missiles are then reported to have struck the ship. So we don't know how many were actually sent. That's another mystery. But since the Russians said that no Ukraine missile were involved, they can't say if they halted any of the missiles. And check this out. Here, a Neptune missile, R-360. So the system cost 40 million and this is what it looks like. Interesting. And if we go below, 
there's something else that's interesting. It says one division consists of 19 vehicles and 72 missiles. At one time, with an interval of several seconds, the division is able to provide a salvo launch of 24 missiles. So that would be extremely interesting to know how many Ukrainian missiles were sent and how many were hit to, to have a comprehensive understanding of what happened. In my opinion, since a Neptune coastal defense system comprises a US PU-360 truck-based mobile launcher with four missiles, we can guess that four missiles were launched at the Moskva and two detonated on its exposed deck side missile tubes. Now, the reason why this is much more important than we think. One of the reasons why this is so bad for Russia, what's happening is not necessarily the ship itself, is that it's multiple ships that have been damaged, put out of action. So I don't have the full list of Russian vessels in the Black Sea. If you know, let me know in the comment section, that would help me a lot. But right now, what we see is that we already have the Caesar Kunikov, then you have another amphibious landing ship, the Saratov, sunk. And now you have a cruiser, the Moskva, sunk. And now you even have first rank captain Andre Pallier dead. What does this mean from an operational perspective? It, it has tremendous importance. If we look at a, a map of the region around Kherson, the Russians are holding the line here. Ukrainian forces are defending Mykolaiv. There's a lot of forces there. However, the problem for the Ukrainians is that a lot of their forces are still around Odessa in case of a Russian amphibious landing. And if we zoom in like a lot, we see there's one brigade, two, three, four, five, about five to six brigades in Odessa to counter a possible Russian amphibious assault. Now, if Ukrainians have indeed hidden batteries of Neptune missiles right here. And we saw the range is about 300 kilometers. With 300 kilometer range, that means that they can easily fire on any ship in this region. And I think that the Moskva was hit somewhere here. That means that any concentration of Russian ships that would like to attack Odessa would face severe Neptune missile strikes. Now I saw pictures of Russian submarines that will enter the battle in the Black Sea. So for now, we've mainly seen uh, warships. The situation can be very bad for the Russians. Let's say the forces on Edessa know that the city won't be attacked by any amphibious landing. All the brigades can go help the guys in Mykolaiv push in this direction and potentially recapture Kherson. This would be one of the most severe defeats for Russia if this would happen. And this also explains why the Russians immediately destroyed the factory that was building these Neptune missiles. Is it going to be enough? I'm not sure because I think Canada and Britain are going to send more anti-ship missiles, not Ukrainian ones, but something else to Ukraine. So the threat is real for the Russian Navy and also how many they have left and the threat they can pose to the Russian Navy. Anyway, that's all I have for you regarding the Moskva. Let me know what you thought of my analysis in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And like I said, and like I said, in order to help me produce more content about Ukraine and not face limited ads, make sure to support me on Patreon. The link is in the description.